This is Mark Kelly of The Roots welcoming you to another math tutorial video by Mr. Witt and Fort Bend Tutoring. FBT, where personalized math tutoring is the solution. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, FBT. Today's lesson is going to be about solving two-step linear equations, so let's check it out. All right, so these are going to be uh, examples, ladies and gentlemen, over problems where it only takes you two steps to solve. Two steps, that's it and you have your answer. So let's dig in. Problem number one, we have 5x plus 2 equals to negative 13. If I want to solve for this equation, ladies and gentlemen, my first step is to isolate the term with the variable. That's what we always are trying to do. We're trying to get the variable by itself, a positive one of our variable, whatever it may be. And in this case, it's our variable x. So let's get the term that has x in it by itself. So you're going to always use the opposite operation when you attack this, ladies and gentlemen, or in this case, I'm going to use the additive inverse, which means the opposite to both sides of my equal sign using the addition property of equality. So all that is to say this, subtract two to both sides. So here, ladies and gentlemen, I could also say that I am going to add negative two to both sides of my equal sign here, just like so. I'm going to cancel out my twos. I'm going to bring down the term 5x. I am always want to write my steps from left to right, ladies and gentlemen. That keeps a good flow. And here I have negative 13 minus 2 or negative 13 plus negative 2. Like signs add, ladies and gentlemen. So I'll end up with a negative 15 here thus far in my process. All right, so that was the first step. Subtract two to both sides. Then in my next step, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be using the division principle of equality or the division property of equality, and I'll just divide both sides by five. Yeah, I'm always trying to isolate that variable, get it by itself. So here, ladies and gentlemen, you'll notice that I'll bring down my variable x, and x will equal to a negative divided by a positive is a negative, so I'm gonna have my negative waiting for me there, and 15 divided by five is three, so this gives me my result, ladies and gentlemen. I'll put a big red box around that, because that's how I roll, okay? Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. So x equals to negative three, done and done. That was problem number one. So what happened? We isolated the term that had the variable by getting that 5x by itself. We subtracted two to both sides. We brought down, writing from left to right, the 5x equals to negative 15. And anytime you have a number in front of a variable, which is called a coefficient, by the way, I'm going to divide both sides by that exact same number. So here I'm dividing both sides by five. I end up with x equals to negative three because a negative divided by a positive is always a negative, ladies and gentlemen. And anytime you see a fraction, know that the operation is division. Mm-hmm, every single time. So I put a box around my answer, and that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That nasty-looking number right there, that's a three. So the answer is negative three, done and done. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? All right, moving on. Here in my next problem, ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is going to be about two-step linear equations and how to solve them. I have the equation 4x equals to x plus 9. 4x equals to x plus 9. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get all of the terms that have a variable in it on one side of the equal sign. It really doesn't matter whether you solve for it on the left side of the equal sign or on the right side of the equal sign. But what I like to do, ladies and gentlemen, is to always have a positive coefficient on my variable, which means means I'm going to solve this on the left side of the equation here. So I'm going to subtract x to both sides. Yeah, just like that. All right. Once again, using that addition principle of equality, I'm going to be adding a negative x to both sides. Or you could say that I'm using the subtraction property of equality and subtracting x to both sides of the equal sign. Bottom line, if you do it on one side, you got to do it on the other to keep it balanced. All right. So on the left side of the equal sign, ladies and gentlemen, I have 4x minus 1x, and that's going to give me 3x. All right. This now equals 2. Here over here, I'm canceling out my x's, and I bring down my 9. So after that first step, ladies and gentlemen, I have 3x equals to 9. Next, I'm going to divide both sides by the number in front of the variable. And the number in front of the variable is 3. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3 here. That's what's going on. That's what's up. I end up with x equals to 3, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to put a box around my answer. We have a love affair with 3's today. And so here you are. There you go. There's the full scope of everything. x equals to 3. That was problem number 2. Let's move on, shall we? All right. In our next example, I have negative 3x plus 17 equals to negative 22. My first step is always to isolate the term with the variable in it. So I want to get that negative 3x by itself. And I didn't realize that I had so many 3s in these problems. So uh, forgive me for that if you 
if you're biased about your numbers. All right, so my first step here is going to be subtracting 17 to both sides of the equal sign. So I have a minus 17 here and a minus 17 there. Whatever I do to one side of the equal sign, I must do to the other side. On the left side of the equal sign, ladies and gentlemen, the 17s will cancel out. So I bring down my negative 3x, which equals to here, I have negative 22 minus 17, like signs add. So I'll keep my sign of the largest number, which is 22. It's going to be a negative. And adding these together, I end up with 39. So thus far, I have negative 3x equals to negative 39. Next, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be using the division principle of equality and dividing both sides by negative 3. Mm -hmm. Some people call it the division principle. Some people call it the division property. Either one is correct. It depends on the authors of the textbook. And here, I have a negative divided by a negative. And a negative divided by a negative, ladies and gentlemen, is a positive. So 39 divided by 3 is just going to be 13. All right, let me go ahead and put my box around that, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be the result of that problem. And now I'm going to move on to the next one. Problem number four. That's what's up. Here, notice we have a fraction. I have 4 fifths x equals to negative 8. 4 fifths x equals to negative 8. And my point here, ladies and gentlemen, is to show you how to solve this in two steps. So what I'm going to do here, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm going to start by multiplying both sides by the denominator. Anytime you multiply an equation by the common denominator of all the fractions and numbers inside of an equation, you can actually get rid of the fractions, ladies and gentlemen. So that's what I want to do. So since my denominator here is 5, I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. So I'm going to have 5 times 4 fifths x equals to 5 times negative 8. All right? When I do that, ladies and gentlemen, remember that 5 is over 1, and I can simplify before I multiply, which is my preference, and I can end up canceling out those 5s there. All right? 5s are gone. So I'm going to bring down my 4x, which now equals to negative 40. All right? Just like that. Notice how I don't have any threes in this problem. I'm excited about that. So once again, my first step was to get rid of the fraction by multiplying both sides by the denominator of 5. So I multiplied the first term by 5, and I multiplied my right side by 5 as well. My 5s cancel out, so I end up with 4x, which equals to negative 40. That's the result of 5 times negative 8. Then, ladies and gentlemen, using that division property of equality, I'm going to divide both sides by 4. Mm-hmm, and I end up with x equaling to negative 10, ladies and gentlemen. Remember that a negative divided by a positive is a negative, and that's going to be the answer to this problem. I'm going to put a box around it because I like putting boxes around my answers. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. So we start out with our fraction. In order to get rid of that fraction, we just simply multiply both sides by the common denominator of the entire equation, which in this case is just 5. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to complete this lesson for today. And that is going to be the solving two-step linear equations, ladies and gentlemen. So keep us in mind anytime you need a math tutorial. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. And keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that we'll be looking for your intros and outros to add to our videos. So just send in your audio file or your video file to fbt at tutormemath.net. Peace. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Like our Facebook page, Fort Bend Tutoring, and visit us on the web at www.tutormemath.net.